All right, so again, just a little reminder with equations and expressions. Equations, they have an equal sign in there. We're asked to solve for something. With an expression, we don't have an equal sign. We just have some symbols and operations, adding or subtracting or dividing and multiplying them together. And we're just asked to simplify. So we're going to take a closer look at equations in chapter 2, first part being solving them. How do we solve them if I have addition involved? So again, an equation is a number sentence that says the expressions on either side. So equations are made up of expressions. On e either side of the equal sign represent the same number. So those few examples. 3 plus 2, that expression is exactly the same as 5, and we know that to be true. Or we could have something more arbitrary, like x plus 6 is 13. So we're saying that whole expression, x plus 6 is the same as 13. And eventually we're going to be able to solve for what x value do I need to plug in to make this thing true. All right, so equations can be either true if I pick the right x or false if I choose the wrong x. And don't make it equal 13, true, false, or we could have the neither option. And we'll take a look at those in a minute. So, first example, determine if the equations are true, false, or neither. So looking at A, when I add, excuse me, 3 and 2 together, are they equal? Is that equation true? Are those two expressions equal to each other? Yeah, if I add 3 and 2, I get 5. So yes, 5 is equal to 5. That thing is true. Now for part B, we're not given an x value specifically. So they're not telling us plug in 2 for x or plug in 12 for x. So, in reality, is this true? Is this false? Is it neither? It's neither until we're given an x value and we can actually evaluate the equation there. So, in its current state, it's neither. We need more information. And uh, lastly, 7 minus 2, is that thing equal to 4? No, 5 is not equal to 4, so that is false. All right. So, until we're given an x value or variable value to evaluate that, those equations are neither. We need more information. All right, so if we do make a replacement for the variable that makes an equation true, it is called a solution. So if I plug in a number that actually works, um, it's one of these solutions. To solve an equation means we want to find all of its solutions. So in these cases, we only have one solution. In other cases, when we look at more dimensions, we might have more than one, or we will have more than one. So, let's do a few. Determine whether 7 is a solution, again, of the equation, because we have an equal sign in there, x plus 6 equal to 13. So we're looking at that example again. So when I evaluate x at 7, does it make this equation true? So I get, yeah, 13 is equal to 13. So yes, 7 is a solution to that equation. It's the only solution, only thing that will make that true. All right, so that was the first one. Let's look at the second. Determine whether 19 is a solution of 7x equal to 144. Okay, so 19 times 7, what is that given us? Is that equal to 144? If you do the math, maybe off in the margin. We're looking at 133. That's not equal to 144. So that tells me 19 is not a solution of this equation. So 19 is not a solution. But in our first case, 7 was. All right, so three for you to try. Determine whether the given number is a solution of the given equations. All right, so what were you thinking for that part A? If I plug in 7 into this equation, is 7 
plus 4 really equal to 11? It is. It makes it true. So, again, 7 is a solution to that equation. What about for B? If I plug in 12 and I add 13 to it, I'm getting 25. That's not equal to 27. So, in that case, 12 is not a solution to that specific equation. What about for part C? If I plug in a negative 3 for x and evaluate, I have 7 minus 3 will give me a positive 4. Positive 4 is not equal to a negative 4, so no. In that case, negative 3 is not a solution to that equation.